Hey guys, my name is Stan Prokopenko. Welcome to a critique episode of Proko. So this episode is gonna be on the shoulder lesson. If you haven't seen the shoulder lesson, uh, click on the link below in the description and watch those first. Uh, a bunch of you watched the lesson, you did the assignment for that lesson and you posted it in the Facebook group. So now in this video, I'm gonna critique those assignments. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this first critique is for Yinbo Zhu. So Yinbo, you got this pretty nice drawing. Um, I see you're starting to exaggerate some things, some of your curves. Um, the issue is that your exaggerations are based off of wrong anatomy. Um, so I'm gonna go through and point out a few of the things that you exaggerated a little bit too much. Mostly it's in the skeletal structure. The muscles you put on top they're fine, but because the skeleton underneath is off, it makes your muscles look a little bit weird too. So let's start with the base. You got the spine. Looking at Skelly here, this was your reference, the thoracic curve of the spine here is about like that, a nice subtle curve. On yours, very, very strong exaggerated curve and that kind of makes it look like his back is like twisted up and kind of broken. That's not a very realistic arch of the back. Um, and then going through the neck, you'll get the nuchal ligament right there. So that would be the center line of the neck. Also kind of subtle. There is a curve but on yours, really strong corner again in here very strong angle this way so just way too much zigzag going through your spine making it look broken down here in the sacrum you kind of just put i think a gesture line you just kind of continued the motion down this way um, instead of following the actual midline of the sacrum and what you did is fine. If you're just following motion, that's fine. But then if you start basing structure off of that motion curve, it makes things go out of place. So you have to know the difference between a, a general action line that's just showing motion and an actual midline going down the center of the body. So the issue with what you did is that you based these ellipses of the pelvis off of this gesture line. You were, I guess, thinking that this line is the midline of the pelvis or of the sacrum, and so you put the distance between them based on that midline. So here's the issue. The actual midline goes like this, follows the outer curve of the sacrum, and so the ellipses will be here, And if you had done that on yours, look at the ellipses, see how far this one is and how close that one is. And so what happened was that your pelvis is now turning the wrong direction because the midline it was in the wrong spot. So just watch out for that kind of structural stuff. The other area uh, in the skeleton that's throwing off the rest of the figure is the scapula. So look at, you got the medial ridge right here. That's like one of the first angles you're probably gonna find. And then from this corner to the acromion, it's an angle somewhat like that. Notice how it's wider than a 90 degree angle, right? A 90 degree would be something like that. But this is a wider angle. On yours, you got the, medial ridge there, you got the acromion right here, and you're creating an acute angle. So that is the wrong scapula shape. Another way you could have seen that the acromion was creating the incorrect angle was just the distance from the chin to the acromion. Look how close they are here. They're almost touching on Skelly. On yours, they're very far apart. So what we need to do is put the acromion 
right there. But it still feels like the angle is too tight. So I would then also drop the angle down here. So the bottom of the scapula would be over here. There. So this would be the placement of the scapula. And maybe another reason you did that was because you were trying to create a distance between the chin and the deltoid. But with this sort of placement of the acromion being this close to the chin, when you put the deltoid on top, it's going to look something like that. It's going to cover the chin. You know, I raise my shoulder up. If you're looking from the back, that shoulder is going to be covering my chin. Okay, so that would be the deltoid. And then the arms, you're thinking, to, uh, I think maybe of the muscles too early. Start with a cylinder for the, the limbs. Figure out the perspective. Terrace major in here, going underneath that cylinder. Infraspinatus going above. So that would be the construction of that shoulder. And so, you know, looking at your trapezius in this, in this one, it's just, you know, the, it's flowing left and right just because of the spine being very zigzag. So Gabriella Birchall says, here are some of my studies from the scapula muscle lesson. At first, it was really hard to visualize them and I had to trace over a bunch of model photos. But now they are a bit more solid to me. I bet they still are a bit wonky and incorrect though. I tried coloring, I tried color coding the muscles to help out. So yeah, that's good that you did some tracings first. That's a good first step. Uh, tracing is not going to make you draw better, but it is a good way to kind of ease into anatomy. If you're having a hard time understanding the muscles or even just you're looking at an area, it's like, I have no idea what it is. So first of all, go to a book or go to, you know, open up one of my eBooks and study the attachments, study the forms of the muscles, and then get a photo and try to find those muscles on the photo. It's a, it's really hard to kind of look at some diagrams, learn the anatomy, and then go right into drawing it. It's very difficult. But if you put that little step in between of finding the muscles on a model and seeing how it's supposed to actually look on a model in different poses, then it's going to make it a lot easier to then draw them and invent them. Um, so that's fine. That's fine that you traced over it to kind of get familiar with the shapes. As long as it helped you out, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's take a look at what you did. Okay, so not bad. And I mean, you didn't draw, you didn't do quick sketch. The assignment was to do a quick sketch drawing, but that's fine. This is another step into that direction is to actually draw on top of Skelly. It's not as hard as drawing just directly on paper without tracing, but it's not as easy as just tracing a model photo either. It's kind of, it's another step towards that direction of uh, invention. So this is fine. The, the thing that I'm seeing that I think you're not understanding about the anatomy is the attachment point of the serratus muscle. And you actually put a little arrow there with a question mark. So I, I, I can tell you don't understand it. It attaches to the medial ridge of the scapula. So in here, you, you're showing this gap in between. But there wouldn't be a gap because it connects along this ridge right here. So all of this would be serratus and it'd be filled in in here like that. Same thing here. That, this one's close just because we're not seeing underneath. This is important because this actually affects what you're seeing on the surface. You're showing all the muscles tracking from the origin right here to the insertion right here and here. So that's good. But the forms you're showing are a little bit off. From this angle, you're going to see the thickness of the infraspinatus and the thickness of the terrace major. So you're going to actually see two bumps on the surface. And I'll, I'll show you in a minute here an actual model photo of that. So let's move on to your next page. Okay, so similar issue with the serratus. You're 
it looks like the serratus in here is going in and then connecting to the rib cage. If it was connecting to the ridge, you'd see it coming out from under it like that. So it'd be a little bit thicker. Maybe a little thicker in here and in here, but it's close. Um, also, Terrace Major, make it a little bit more bulbous right there. He's kind of bringing his shoulder back uh, or his arm back, probably flexing the Terrace Major. So it would be flexed, it would, it would be rounder in that position. So th don't just think about, you know, it starts here, ends here, put it like some general shape in there in between. Think about what the muscle's actually doing. Is it stretching or is it flexing? Okay, now back to this contour. It's not gonna be flat in there. It's gonna pop out as that muscle is going from the origin. It's going right at us and it's getting thicker right as it's coming at us. And so you're gonna see that thickness all along there. Same thing with the Terrace Major. And let me show you a model photo. Terrace Major, Infraspinatus, and then up in here, you're seeing a little bit of a corner. That's the, this corner of the scapula right here. There's the acromion, spine of the scapula, like that. And then from there, you got the, the trapezius coming up. So very subtle curves along the contour, but those are the things that are gonna make your anatomy more accurate. Now look, you can even see the serratus coming out right there, right from the bottom of the scapula, right there. Right after that bump of the teres major, ser the serratus will come out. It, they won't be all the way deep under there like that, right? Oh, Gabriel, I also just noticed that your origin for the serratus is too far in the back. It's going to be much farther to the front of the rib cage. We can see the serratus coming around from a front view. So how you indicated it wouldn't it wouldn't even be visible from the front. You're indicating it all the way back here. So it'd be about at this arc right here. That's where the digits insert onto the ribs. It's parallel to this line for the cartilage connection to the ribs. So, all right, I think that's all you got there. Let's move on to, this one is from Erez Guapo. This is really nice. I like how it's clean. I like how you are putting every muscle in there. You're really studying the anatomy um, and you're simplifying the bones into simple forms. So very good. This is a, an example uh, for everybody of how they should be approaching these. One critique and that's, again, for the, the structure of the rib cage, um, is showing more angles. You're showing a curve in these guys. And yes, there, there is a curvature to the rib cage there, but because you're dealing with a curve, it, it's hard to get the perspective of it correctly. So if you construct it with a box instead, you'll get it much more accurate. Uh, so the way I would approach it, corner in there, find the other side, something like this, and that feels better to me. I think you kind of push the bottom of the rib cage in too much, and, um, and so the, the, the whole bottom part is a little pointy. It should feel a little more boxy, have more uh, structure in there. I would do the same thing with all the others in here. Add the corners, show the side plane, front plane, bottom plane. Another thing actually that I'm seeing now is some of these forms are a little bit too skinny. Like this neck is too skinny. Um, this one's too skinny. This clavicle is really skinny feel like it would break really easy. Um, this terrace major, 
Look at that. It's like a line. There's no bulk to that terrace major at all. Now, yes, you are stretching it, but it's going to retain its form much more than that, even when it's stretching. Um, so I would add just a little bit more bulk like that to the terrace major. It's a pretty major muscle, <laughs> terrace major. Um, especially on an athletic person, it's going to really pop out in the back. It's, it's, it's a thick muscle. Everything else looks pretty good, so good job. Thanks to everybody who submitted their assignments. For you guys out there who are doing the anatomy lessons right now, um, you could still submit them to the Facebook group and get feedback from the community. You could email me, I'll give you a critique as well. Um, but hopefully by watching other people get critiqued, you will also learn a little bit from them. Um, it'll help you fix some of your mistakes. Okay, thanks guys for joining. I'll see you next time. So we have a premium section for students that want to learn more. The premium section has extended lessons with more information about the topic. It also has additional drawing demonstrations. If you do the assignments for each lesson, these demonstrations serve as the answers for the assignment, so you can check your work. There's an ebook version of each lesson that you can download as a PDF. Print them out or keep them on your device so you can quickly review the lessons. And finally, the premium section has 3D models that you can spin around, study, and draw from any angle. If you don't want your drawings to look like this, go to proco.com anatomy.